Hello, welcome to Enox Engineering, I'm Alan. Today in the workshop I'll be looking at some new equipment, an ER32 collet holder for the mill, and also a set of parallel strips. We'll also take a look behind the scenes and see how I get some of the shots for the videos and I'll show you how I made a new camera uh, mount that can travel the length of the workshop so I don't need to use a tripod in the workshop. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. First of all we'll just look at this set of collets and some parallel strips both supplied by Banggood. It has 11 pieces comes in this plastic container so you get the spanner for the collet the 11 ER32 collets and the R8 adapter with the the largest size collet I think is this one and that goes up to 3 quarter inch smallest one is one eight what's on the top just here the reason why I got this set was this has an R8 taper on here which fits the spindle on the milling machine it has a 716 20 UNF thread for the drawbar And that's the half inch collet on there. It's a nice thread on that. The finish is really good. As usual I've had to take the sharp edge off the, the slot but everything else was okay. The spanner you get is this type of spanner for Tightening up the collets. The only thing you don't get is a spanner to go onto the flats to stop your spindle moving when you tighten up. But I'm impressed with the finish. The grinding is what I'd expect from a ground finish. It's ground for a purpose and not just to make it look pretty. But this one looks as if it's been made correctly for the job. So all I want to do is put a half inch dowel and I'll put it so that the back of the dowel is just level with the back of the collet. I'll fit the collet into the taper. Now I'll fit this into the milling machine and measure the run out on this dowel. Then I'll tighten up the collet with the spanner Fit the dial indicator into the the vice. I'll just wind the spindle in or the table over till it touches the dial indicator. Set it at zero. This dial indicator from zero to ten is one thou, so every division is a tenth of a thou. And I'll turn the spindle on. So the run out on that is seven tenths. So if I now lift the spindle up to the end of the dowel. And check the run out there. Tooth there run out there. Okay, I'm just going to use a lever type indicator, hold it in the vise. See if I can touch the 
side of the collet. And I've just touched the dial indicator on the inside of the collet taper. <laughs> One division is 0.01 so I think that's about 0.02 which is less than a thou. That's the ER32 collet set with an R8 shank. To sum up it's well made, the grinding is excellent and the run out was 7 tenths of a thou. Very happy with that, does what I need it to do and these are from Banggood. This is a set of parallel strips. The parallel strips are six inches long, one eighth of an inch thick, and go from half inch high up to one and six eighths. And there are ten strips in the set. They're the same thickness and they're the same length. The only difference in sizes are the height. The complete set comes in a plastic case, and I'll add the link to the video description at the beginning of the video. So I've just put some parallel strips under here and it's too low for a milling cutter to come down across here. If I change the strips for the next ones along And you can see that's just fractionally above the surface of the voice jaws but not enough to be able to mill across the front the top of the voice. I've changed it for the next one up. Now you can see I've got another eighth of an inch higher so I've got plenty of material above the top of the voice. They're parallel with the bottom of the voice and I can tighten the jaws up now and use that to mill. Well, that's a parallel strip set. They're ground all over, even the ends. There's not much else I can say about them. I'll find them useful. And that's a tool review over. We'll now take a look at the modifications and improvements I've made to my camera mounting system and show you how I get some of the workshop shots. This is my modification to my camera mounting which runs across the workshop and the way this works I have a piece of wood on each side and in the middle I've sandwiched some MDF on each side to give me a channel you can see that way just see inside there a bolt head so I have a channel inside here. All this is glued together to hold it. In the bottom of the channel I've put a block of wood similar to that with a hole through so that bolt can go in. This is just a coach bolt fitted to this rod. And when it's fitted to the rod I've put two nuts to lock it so when I turn the rod it doesn't unscrew the coach bolt out of the end of the rod. Now to stop this piece of wood moving in and out I've just put a screw through there and a screw on the other side. When I fix these pieces of wood together I used a hole saw to cut a hole, the diameter of the pipe I'm using from each side and it's important that the centre parts are clear too so it's only the two pieces of wood each side that touch the tube at the top and you can see this is undercut here. The black areas are thin layers of rubber bonded to the wood to prevent the wood slipping and then in the part at the bottom I've made this piece of wood with a V in it 
it's important that the V is across the grain otherwise when you clamp the pole into the block it will split the wood that goes in there that way round and we'll drop down the channel inside but what I've added is a piece of aluminium and all that does is stops the head of the bolt pushing into the, the wood and also inside here there's another piece of steel goes across about the same size with a thread in so the thread comes down to the top of this block of wood this piece goes in this block goes in and what happens when you tighten this screw it pushes the thread up and pushes that inside block up to grip the pipe so this just adjusts the grip on the pipe so it's similar to a V block touching a circle on the back to grip it two holes in the side and through these two I fit this piece of pipe work this is an adjustable handle you just twist it and it comes in and out you can get them from do-it-yourself stores I think they're for rollers or for cleaning windows or something so you just slacken it off and you can move it in and out I've actually cut this one down because it was twice the length I needed it will lock on the bottom I fitted some aluminium angle and then this is just a camera mount that you can use to swivel the camera around lock it up it's on a ball that locks up and that's bolted through the the back so this gives me my up and down movement on the shaft so if you imagine the camera's on there I can move it up and down I can swing it round and then on the other end I fitted some aluminium tubing to strengthen it because this tube's very thin this is then bolted onto the block of wood by fitting two coach bolts in this side goes into the wood through into the metal and then I just put a couple of washers and nuts on this side to hold it got two bolts I'll use two square nuts just to locate the washers Standard nut on the end just to lock it. And that's the camera mounting device finish. One handle you turn and twist to clamp to the the bar. The other hang handle extends, contracts and holds the camera mount on the end. Now you can see this white tube in the workshop roof. It comes along and this goes the length of the workshop. And to hold it to the roof, I've made these wooden brackets. At the top of the bracket, it's screwed into the roof rafter. And then near the bottom of the bracket, see if I can show. There are two holes drilled into it and this U-bolt has got a thread on each end and that holds the pipe. And I've got one of those brackets at the other end of the workshop. That's the bracket at the other end. You can see the U-bolt holding the pipe. Here's the pipe travelling from one end of the workshop to the other so I can move the camera wherever I need it. So if I put the camera on it just goes over the pipe and then by tightening this tube here twisting it the 
the bolt moves in and the piece of wood clamps up against the pipe. Here you can see how the pipe clamp clamps onto the pipe and holds the camera into position. Now I can twist this over like that and lock it in that position. At the bottom you can see the camera holder and I can move that in and out, up and down, left and right and anywhere along the workshop. So let me move the camera over. I'm holding the camera in the device. I can swing the camera around on the ball joint anywhere to get a picture. I can move the pole anywhere from level with the device or I can move it up to give a higher position and swivel it. So just a simple block of wood and a tube. The, um, the pole is actually an aluminium tube which my brother got for me. It's two pieces about seven foot long. This is the joint between the two pipes. One pipe has a spigot on, the other pipe has a plain bore. There are two O-rings on the spigot and it's just the pressure of the O-rings in the bore that hold the two pipes together. And it was used as a flagpole for an automotive dealer. I'll just show you another addition. I've had this computer screen in the workshop uh, for a number of years because it's used with my CNC machine. Uh, on the back of this one I noticed there was a DVI socket. Let me just show you that. This is the back of the screen at the bottom. You have the power feed, the normal VGA input and here are some USB inputs. But on here I've got this DVI socket I just purchased this adapter which is a DVI socket that fits there and the other end goes to HDMI and then from this I go to a 5 meter HDMI cable and that then goes into the camera. I can use this computer screen to see the video image that I'm recording. See if I can set this up and show you. So by connecting my camera to the screen you can now see the image on the screen. We can start at this end of the workshop that's the view from the back of the workshop to the milling machine and I'll go down the workshop so you can get an idea of the versatility of the camera mount. You see this is the view from the front of the lathe. Now normally I'd have a tripod here to get this type of shot. There's no tripod in the way now. You see now I can get a view from above the tailstock. A view of the cutter grinder. And then from here a view of the vice. Well that's it for today. I hope that was interesting. I hope to see you next time on Enots Engineering.